Welcome back to TFT Central. Today we're going to talk you through the best settings for the MSI MPG 321 URX OLED monitor. We'll do the best settings for SDR use and HDR. The screen is in its default factory configuration at the moment, so we'll load up the on-screen menu. The first two sections, the GI menu and the gaming menu, are really just a series of different settings for gaming. You can have a play around with those if you like. Uh, they will depend on your individual gaming preferences. The one that you might want to turn on here would be Adaptive Sync, which will give you the variable refresh rate support for gaming. The main setting we're going to change, first of all, is to move out of the Pro mode. The default is Eco. Now, there are a couple of options here. You can either use User and configure that yourself, which would operate within the full wide gamut of the panel. So if you don't mind the more vivid and saturated colors of the wide gamut mode, even for desktop and SDR applications, then by all means use this user mode and we'll show you how to set that up in a moment. That's the best one to use for wide gamut operation. For SDR content, if you want a more accurate setup, you can scroll down and use the sRGB emulation mode, which accurately clamps to the smaller color gamut and will improve color accuracy for SDR and sRGB content. There's also emulation modes here for Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 if you want to work in either of those color spaces. For most people for SDR, we'd probably recommend either using the sRGB mode for absolute accuracy in the smaller color space, or just use the user mode if you don't mind the colors being more saturated and vivid, or if you prefer that for your SDR content. So the sRGB mode has very few options that you can change. We'll, we'll just do that one first. You'll see in the image section, the only setting you can really now change is brightness. You can customize that to your liking depending on your ambient room conditions. We'll probably turn that down a little bit, somewhere to around a setting of around 40 or 50 should give you a comfortable luminance for a typical room setup. The other settings here for color temperature and things like that are not available in the sRGB mode. The other option, like we said, is you can use the user mode, activating the full native gamut of the panel again. And you'll see that more of the settings are available here. So so in this mode, if you want to use this one, you can turn the brightness down to something lower. Again, customize this to your liking. We're going to move this all the way down to a setting of 34. That will return us a luminance of around 120 nits, which is what we normally use and what we recommend in our reviews. Obviously, like I say, set this to something higher if you prefer. Contrast can stay on its default, that's fine. Sharpness, again, that's fine on its default. Color temperature, now this is set to normal as standard, but we're actually gonna to move to the customization setting. That gives you access to the RGB channels, as you can see. And we're gonna bump these all the way back up to 100 to start. You'll see the color of the panel goes very odd as we do so, it goes red, and it goes very green and yellow, and then finally it will balance back out. So we're gonna start at 100 for each because otherwise you're artificially reducing the brightness of the panel. We're going to move this one down to 97 for red. Uh, green, we're going to move down to 99. And blue, we're going to leave on 100. So that should return you a white point that is nicely balanced at 6,500K or D65. So those would be our recommended RGB settings for this user mode. So brightness, like I say, set that to whatever you like. That's fine. You can come in here and a couple of settings that you might want to enable would be the HDMI CEC. So once enabled, that means that when the screen detects an HDMI source is powered on, then it would auto switch over to that input. So that's handy if you have a games console connected, for instance, and you want the screen to just switch quickly and easily between the DisplayPort input for PC and that external device. You can turn on the Type-C power delivery charge if you want here, that's fine. In the MSI OLED Care, there are a few options. Well, there are a lot of options to play with. You can't turn pixel shift off. Set that to whatever you feel comfortable. If you notice the screen shifting around a lot during use or you find it distracting, maybe turn it down to slow. The panel protect you would have to run periodically or, or it triggers you to run that at appropriate times. Same with the protect notice. Static screen detection will detect when there's static content shown on the screen and then dim the panel uh, a certain amount when it does so. So you might want to turn this on. Be careful that it doesn't dim it during your normal desktop and static usage, but you can set that to on. You can set the time in which it starts, the time required, 
and the reducing level, so that's how aggressive the dimming is. Experiment with that. If you find it problematic during your usage, then you can turn it back off. Multi-logo detection, that will detect static elements and logos shown on the screen. Again, you can turn that on and you can change the reducing level if you want. There's only two settings available for that. We found that actually seemed to dim the screen quite a lot during desktop and office use. So we're gonna leave that turned off, but have a play around with it and see how it works for you. Taskbar detection. There seem to be no adverse effects of leaving this on. So we're gonna turn that on. That will detect your taskbar and dim that area a little bit, which is handy. Same with boundary detection. That will detect the boundary between different images or your image in your background. We'll turn that on. You can uh, change the reducing level as well, uh, depending on how aggressive you want that to be. Experiment around with that, see if it causes you any problems. If not, then I would recommend leaving that on. So that's all the OLED care options. The only other setting really to change is in the image section. There's a setting here for display HDR. We're gonna move it off the true black 400 mode. The screen will go black momentarily. And then when you come back in the menu, you'll see that it's now on peak 1000. That will give you the full brightness capability of the panel, whereas the True Black 400 mode is capped at around 460 nits maximum luminance. So we'd recommend just switching to that. At the moment, there's a strange bug with the HDR behavior on the screen in that the pro mode that you select during SDR, so that is whether you use the user mode, the sRGB mode, or one of the others, that carries through into the HDR mode as well. So if you set the screen to use sRGB, in SDR, then that will also clamp the colors in HDR mode, which obviously you don't want. Ideally, the screen would have a different mode for SDR and HDR, and it would remember which one you're using. But at the moment, it's a universal setting. So what we'd recommend is that if you switch to an HDR input source, you just make sure that you're using the user mode in the main menu. That will make sure that you've got the full native color space of the panel, and you're not artificially clamping it back to sRGB. We expect MSI to update the firmware at some point to make that an independent setting for each mode. So for now, just set that on user if you're in HDR mode. When you input an HDR source, most of the other screen settings are just not available anyway. So there's no need to reconfigure anything else for HDR. And that is it. That should be all the recommended settings for SDR and HDR usage. Let us know in the comments if you've got any questions or anything you want clarifying. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.